Patrick, you started off your wonderful career in photography with a bank loan of £500. How, how did you have the confidence to go and borrow some money and then start this profession? Um, I think I was blessed by having spent two years with John Chillingworth as his assistant. Um, it seems staggering now to think that £500 would be sufficient to start off. You know, I might buy the old lens now, but... Um, it will, yes. Would it be fair to call you, even then, an independent photographer? Have you always been good on your own? I think so. I think I've been a loner, yeah, pretty much. So would that mean if you wanted to do a story, you had to go and see a magazine editor to say, I want to do this, and they, hopefully they would send you? I think what tended to happen was I, I got enough work um, from magazines, but the things I really wanted to do, they weren't asking me to do, so I gradually started doing those things. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think, uh, like a lot of photographers, really, I ran a parallel course you know, of assignments, but in terms of actual subject matter, I mean, I was already sort of wanting to take more whimsical sort of pictures, and that, you know, if you go to a picture editor and said, I, I would like to go and take a set of whimsical pictures, I think they'd be somewhat Scarch, you know. Do you mean whimsical in as, in as much as the English at play? Would you go to things like Ascot Races and yes. Henley? And yeah, very much so. These kind um, of uh, occasions. Yes. Um, I mean, I suppose now one would you know, think, I, wouldn't th I would still go to those things, but I think one would cast the net somewhat wider mm -hmm. you know, than perhaps I did at, uh, at the beginning. But I think al already then I was going up north to the um, to the Yorkshire Dales and to sort of local, small local events, which were another kind of England and, um, you know, pretty much more outside that class-ridden mm. thing. With the Sunday Times and also the Telegraph mm. magazines, do you think you were around at the right time? Did these cause a bit of a stir when they came out? Yes, I think I was blessed. I, I, um, I began shooting um, a few documentary assignments for Queen magazine, which, um, and the art editor of Queen magazine was Mark Boxer, who became the first editor of the Sunday Times magazine. So yes, I was fortunate. I was a, uh, one of a group of a young generation of photographers, uh, John Bulmer, Ian Berry, Don McCullen, Philip Jones Griffiths, um, we were all within a year or so of each other in age. Can I just bring you back a, a little? To when you were on the road with your cameras, do you think some of those pictures you were able to take, you could take now? Do you think there's a resistance to the camera, the documentary camera? I could always count on the fingers of one hand the, the number of times I've run into a problem of someone asking me to stop, either not to take photographs or you know, to, to be antagonistic. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I think you do give off your own vibrations, you know. Uh, and I think if people sense that you are there as a sympathetic witness, I think they'll give you a lot of leeway. I just want to ask you one, one question that's been worrying me for weeks now since I've been looking at your book, um, Being English. What on earth is happening with a guy with his head in the ground? <laughs> I'd love you to explain that to me. Uh, I was, it was in Kensington Gardens, I was uh, strolling across the park looking for pictures and in the distance I saw this motorcycle and this guy with his, apparently his head in the ground and I just ran like hell to get there. It turned out he was, he was practicing his yoga. All right. Yeah, so, but it, to all, for all the world it looked like he'd crash landed off his <laughs> bike. And he'd, Done, done a flyer sort of thing. Yeah, it's an amazing uh, picture. It, well, it, it's just one of those lovely moments, yeah. you know. That, and I suppose, you know, the more you are out there looking, mm. the more chance you have of happy accidents presenting themselves to you. you know. And would you go looking? Would you on the weekend? Would you just go into the parks or? I think having an open, uh, yeah, being enthusiastic about what yeah. you're seeing and looking for what it might be about to happen. Yeah, yeah. Things like that. I think that's a lot of it, is, is sensing a moment which is about yeah. to reveal itself yeah. and, and, and encapsulate perhaps something really sp special about yeah. being there on that day. You certainly improve your chances by getting out of bed in the morning and, and going out and having a yeah. camera around your neck 
ready, set, so that when these fleeting things happen, you're there, you're in tune, you know, you get in there and catch it. If, if you got an assignment, could you tell them you were going to do it in black and white or you were going to do it in colour? Was it up to you or was it up to the magazine? No, I, I think uh, the ma sort of magazines I was working for, they did all want colour. But, for example, when I went and did my own travel trip, which was um, in 1981, I got a bicentennial grant and travelled across America. Uh, and that I chose to shoot entirely in black and white. And what was the subject of that? What? It was really going to events across America, which uh, before computers and everything wasn't that easy to plan or work out. I mean, I drove something like 40,000 miles in a little Honda Accord um, across America, just going to two or three events each week. I think I shot, I actually shot about 80 events in, in, in the year. Did it help that you had a very British eye? Shall we say, you know, you, you worked on magazines here, you worked in England. When you went to America, did things stun you? W was it different? Yeah, yeah. No, I think it did. And, uh, and uh, yes, and uh, to, for me, it was like, um, I mean, the first, the year be or two years before doing the, the grant year, um, I went over and did a story, a uh, set of pictures on a, a group of Hell's Angels called the Dirty Dozen. And um, I remember thinking at the time, you know, I felt like I, w I was actually in a movie, you know, this wasn't, surely this wasn't real life, you know, it was so, these guys were so outrageous and over the top and, so I think there, there is that aspect to America that it's, it's so much of it is like a dreamscape. Mm. You know. um, Did you get resistance from the Hells Angels? Did they mind you photographing them? No, because um, I found a way into the group via friends, which meant that um, it went pretty smoothly. I mean, but I did keep, I do remember that I, I tried to keep my face behind the camera mm -hmm. all the time that, so that all they were aware of was this strange English bloke who wants to photograph us mm -hmm. rather than someone who's come here and wants to be, pretend he's a hell's angel. You know, I mean, I think that's where one could have come unstuck. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and also I knew I, I had like a weekend with them. So it had to be a weekend that was photography and nothing else, you know. I just want to bring you back a little bit to mm. your time in, in Scotland, in, in uh, Glasgow, in the, in the Gorbals and Greenock shipbuilding. Yeah. W was that one story or several stories? Uh, it was several. I mean, uh, the Gorbals was um, shelter, just rang, and that was literally the... Uh, f flew me up. I think I was actually in the Gorbals for about four hours. Out of it came about a eight or ten strong pictures. So, uh, I mean, something like that was very much a you know one-off instant assignment yeah. that happened to give me some strong pictures. Yeah. Something like um, the uh, project for um, uh, the architectural review. Was this man plan? Man plan. Yeah. I think is in a way is a much more. It's possibly the. I sometimes think the only truly hard-hitting project I I did. Um, Can you explain to us what man plan means? The Architectural Review yeah. brought in a guest editor, and he decided that he wanted to do a series of um, very hard-hitting issues of the magazine that wouldn't be about architecture; that they would be about. Um, the state of the nation almost, you know, and quite how he persuaded them to do it. And, and when he called me, I thought he'd rung me by mistake because I, I, you know, I said, well, I don't photograph buildings and I, I'm not very good at getting verticals vertical. Um, and he said, no, 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 I want you to go and just document life around the country. And he and the team did give me sort of some guidance of the sort of areas they wanted to cover and suggested venues and so on. It lasted for about six weeks. And I think it's possibly the most intense six weeks uh, of shooting I've ever done. I mean, just non-stop um, 
but it was very productive. It made a, a 70 page issue of the magazine, yeah. um, which was printed in very gritty black yeah. and white um, and caused enormous ructions, apparently. With, with it, it, even now, there are articles about it, you know, and how, how did the architectural reviewer ever allow this to happen, sort of thing, you know. But was the idea to change towns, change cities? And I think it was to, to say, look, you know, let's stop sitting on our bums and this is the state of the nation it's in. Yeah. What I really enjoy about your colour work is everything about England at its best, if you like, flags flying, the Jubilee. Is that where you felt most comfortable, shooting in colour and shooting vibrant pictures, often in good sunlight? I think they are in a, amongst my most satisfying memories in the sense that um, these are all pictures that have been shot pretty much since the assignments stopped happening. So uh, your, your own generating I, yeah, work? Yeah, I would say they've been shot probably I was over 60 before I shot any of them. Wow. Um, and I'm now 85, so I think the, the last... 25 years have been in many ways the most satisfying because I've photographed what I wanted to photograph um, in the way I wanted to photograph it. On the, your book on the, the mm. Thames, mm. The, go the Golden Thread, yeah. did do you have a theme? Was, was it thematic or are they a collection of pictures you, which you've put together? I think it's the latter really. Um, I think I started off going to the Henley Regatta a few years running. I think it Sometimes you reach a, a like a critical mass with a set of pictures, and you think, "Gosh, you know, this this could build into something more substantial." Um, and with the Thames, I kind of thought, "Well, there's no doubt there's a, there's this terrific concentration of activities, not just Henley, but uh, all the little towns above and beneath it. They all have their annual events and their regattas and so on." So that that became the core in a way of, of, of the project. You begin to think, well, well, what else can I add to it? And then you do start saying, well, let's go to the source of the river and see what's there. You know, and this is tiny stream with a little you know, memorial uh, out in Gloucestershire somewhere. Um, and at the other end, you've got uh, Thames sailing barges uh, thundering past South End. You know. So it's a gradual process that you begin to expand and expand. You got started and then kept adding and, and adding. And you keep adding, adding yeah. you know. Tell us how your work comes to be looked after by Popper Photo. I think I mentioned that John Bulmer um, and I have been particularly friendly over the last 10 years or so. And he mentioned a few years ago that he was building a relationship with Popper Photo. And I said I'd love to know how that goes. And he very kindly introduced me to Bob at Popper Photo and I think it's now reached the point where there are something like 5,000 images up on site, um, hopefully with more to come. And from my point of view, I'm thrilled because it, uh, there's that lovely thought that my work is going to have a life uh, well into the future. And hopefully, you know, one will leave behind know one particular slightly quirky view of life that they might find entertaining it's very entertaining thank mm. you so much thank you it's a pleasure